If you've ever ridden a public bus before, you've probably noticed that most of the people sit in a row by themselves if there's enough space to do so. Eventually, all of the empty rows have one person sitting in them. As more people get on the bus, they have to sit next to someone because there aren't any more open rows available. Eventually, as more and more people get on the bus, all of the seats are taken and the bus is at capacity. The same thing happens with electrons. Well, sort of. Electrons are waves, but the same idea works. Like the people in the bus who initially sit in rows by themselves, electrons of the same subshell, ones with the same n and l, will have the same orientations in 3D space, so same m sub l, if it's possible. So for example, let's say we have an atom with two 2p electrons, and the first electron is 2px. We will use box diagram notation so we have one spin-up 2px electron. Just remember, electrons aren't arrows or particles, they're waves. This box just represents the first three quantum numbers of the electron, n equals 2, l equals 1, and m sub l equals plus or minus 1. Pointing up tells us that the fourth quantum number is m sub s equals plus 1 half. So what about the second 2p electron? What predictions can we make about it? As we know, no two electrons can have the same four quantum numbers in an atom. That means that the second electron cannot be another spin-up 2ps electron, so that's not possible. The other two scenarios are both at least possible, but the correct answer is that it will be a 2py electron or a 2pz electron. But let's pick 2pz. Also, this second electron will also be spin-up. This is Hund's rule. What if we were to have a third 2p electron? What would it be? The third electron would be 2py all three 2p electrons would be unpaired, and this is what leads to the lowest energy state. Moreover, all three electrons will have the same m sub s spin quantum number. But remember, nothing is actually spinning, as this leads to the least amount of electronic repulsion. This is known as Hund's rule. For any subshell, the lowest energy configuration is that in which electrons will have different values of m sub l and the same m sub s. But we know that we can have a maximum of six 2p electrons, so what about the last three? Well, recall that in the bus, once all of the rows were taken up by one person, people had to begin doubling up and we ended up with two people in each row. The same happens with electrons. Right now we have three 2p electrons, so when we add one more electron to our atom, we have no choice but for it to have the same first three quantum numbers, n, l, and m sub l, as one of the others. What is true of this fourth electron that we've just added? Let's say that our fourth electron is another 2py electron, but really it could have also been 2pz or 2px. When we add the next electron, it needs to have the opposite spin of the other electron that has the same n, l, and m sub l, because every electron must have its own unique set of quantum numbers. So since the three electrons we already have are spin up, the fourth electron needs to be spinned down. We can keep adding electrons until each electron has a pair. You may wonder, why pair up electrons at all? Why isn't the fourth electron 3s? That's right, remember, electrons will always be the lowest possible energy, and 2p is lower in energy than 3s. After all, you wouldn't choose to sit on the bus's roof instead of sitting in a row with someone else, would you? <laughs>